Hi, everybody. I'm Paul Wilkie. And I'm Janie Genosis. And you're listening to the Upright Uptake, where we share insights about PR, the media, getting your voice heard, and make the most of your communications. In this episode, we wanted to talk about the eight traits the media considers newsworthy. If you frame your media pitch to include at least one of these, you'll have a better chance of coverage. Janie, I'm really glad you have eight traits because for the longest time, I've sort of had these three questions that I've, I've asked uh, clients in terms of newsworthiness. The first one is, is this something someone outside of your organization would be interested in reading about? That's question one. And the second question I would ask, really? Um, and then the third question is, are you sure? Uh, and if the answer is yes to all three of those, it's newsworthy. But your, your approach is a lot better. So let's go with that, which brings us to our first trait, which is make sure it's timely and trending. Um, you know, is this something that's happening politically, socially, economically? What's popular or new? What's the angle within this news that makes it news? When you send out a press release or receive exclusive coverage, the second that story hits or the second that press release hits the wire, reporters don't want to cover it unless it's something really groundbreaking and you know, FOMO is involved or they feel like they need to report this as well. Paul, that is so true. If something's already happened and everybody knows about it, it's no longer news. So it's really important that it's timely. And that brings me to our next topic, which is proximity. Is your news valuable to a local community? Is it valuable to a regional community, nationally, worldwide? It's pretty easy to determine, but if you're hoping to get news coverage outside of a local area and your news is only interesting to a local area, it's not gonna happen. One thing to look at is the pro football season. So in the early season, you really don't hear a lot about teams outside your area or even see games outside your area. Once those playoffs start, you start hearing about regional playoffs and national playoffs. And once the Super Bowl happens, you're going to get covered across the U.S. and across the world. So think about your story in terms of pro football and proximity and think about where's the best place to put that. Journalists want stories that interest most of their audience. So local news is rarely going to make national headlines. Sometimes they do cross paths. Fortunately, we had a client a few years ago that was doing something with Standing Rock, the pipeline uh, in, in the Dakotas. And we had an event where a celebrity was there. And that's the next trait we're talking about is celebrity. So we had Shailene Woodley there and we were able to sort of make a local story national. It was already a national story, but having a celebrity factor uh, really makes a difference. If you can tie your story to an Elon Musk or a Kardashian, you'll probably see some traction. But celebrity doesn't mean just famous people. It can be well-known, well-loved, or even controversial brands people recognize. You really want to sort of, if you've got something that connects to something bigger than you, a bigger company, a celebrity, or a spokesperson, and if you partner with the powerful and recognizable, you tell the world about it. You might want to check with their legal department before you send the pitch to stay in the good graces because some celebrities... You know, they are paid celebrity endorsers um, or influencers. And if you can be the David to their Goliath, that often wins coverage too. Speaking of David and Goliath, that also applies to our next trait, which is conflict. The media loves a controversy, a scandal, a disagreement when something goes horribly wrong. In these instances, though, it's important to tread very carefully. Always take the high road if it involves you, your client, or your organization. But there are usually coverage opportunities in the carnage. And solving a problem or admitting a wrongdoing and sharing how you're changing or doing things better can be some positive spins on controversy. Sharing some unbelievable but true statistics that might be controversial can be a great way to get covered too. That is so true. And it really ties into our next trait, which is impact. Does your story have an effect on the journalist's audience? If you can share something valuable, interesting, surprising, concerning, or useful to the target audience of that journalist, they may be interested in doing a story on it. CNBC is a great example. The great thing about CNBC and, and, CN, and you know, other media outlets like it, they love hearing how a smaller company is making 
a big impact on a larger company. Maybe their software is, is what drives their, their sales, or maybe they have a part in, in, in their manufacturing that makes a big difference. And that's a great angle for a pitch. I agree. And you know that goes back to what you said at the very beginning of this video. Really? Why? What's important? So think about what's important to that audience. Another great angle is our sixth trait. And this one's one of my favorites, I think, because I came from the nonprofit world, and that's human interest. Does your story have a hero's journey to it? Is there a rags to riches component, success against all odds, or maybe something that just tugs at your heart. And one of my favorite recent stories was about YouTuber David Aguilar, who created a Lego prosthesis for his missing forearm. And then the story with the heartstrings is that he helped this little boy who had really no arms at all and built him this, this beautiful Lego arm and the joy of this little boy and seeing David be able to help him just, it brings a tear to your eye. It received tons of coverage and tugged the hearts around the world. I love this story. It's such a touching story. And which really plays to our next trait in a, in a sort of different way. You want a story that's unique. And sometimes unique stories are the bizarre ones. In journalism, I was taught very early on, uh, dog bites man, that's not a story. Man bites dog, that's something people are going to want to see on the news or, or read about. Uh, can you share something bizarre? It doesn't have to be a freak of nature or a, a potato shape like you know, Betsy Ross, but you know, do you have something that's genuinely unique and bizarre? The Today Show recently covered NASA's initiative to research UFOs. This morning, the effort to uncover the mystery behind those UFO sightings is about to get some help from some serious space probes. <laughs> NASA announcing it'll form a new and independent team to investigate Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, or UAPs, but instead of focusing on classified encounters with military jets, the agency plans to examine data they've already possibly captured and may even include recordings taken by civilians. And here's an Australian 60 Minutes piece about women over 60 giving birth for the first time. At five years of age, Freya Tollefson is a bundle of playful energy. No! Yeah. Her 62-year-old mum, Susan, gamely trying to keep up. Yeah, you're my big guy to shoot you. And high-octane twins, eight-year-old Gian and Francesca St. James, are double trouble. Sucks! For their nearly 66-year-old mother, Alita. They are the new generation of children born to mothers whose age would normally make them their grandmothers. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I can't even imagine giving birth at, at 60. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> That's bizarre. <laughs> so, JD, I, do you have another fun example of, of using sort of the bizarre angle to get some coverage? I do, and this is not nearly as bizarre as women giving birth over 60 or UFOs, but um, we had at my nonprofit people who came and volunteered and gave checks and they always wanted media coverage. And we could never get it with just a check presentation or just a volunteer event. So I brainstormed with this wonderful organization who had a carousel. They had raised money every time someone rode the carousel, they paid the money and gave it, donated it to our organization. And so we said, hey, what if we get a pony, a carousel pony to come out and we'll promote this pony along with this check presentation and have a live pony at the event dressed up like a carousel horse. And surprisingly, it was enough to get the local media out and we got coverage on all the local TV stations. However, the horse um, was really good until the camera got there and then the horse was running away and, and, and not behaving at all. But you know, it was really fun to see how just adding a little element like that can take something that isn't newsworthy and make it newsworthy. I didn't have a pony to deal with, but when we rolled out the Volkswagen Beetle in Singapore a few years back, we actually had a, a color competition where kids could design and color the car the way they wanted to. And we, we, we picked the winners and we actually painted the cars the way the kids designed them. And it got, you know, it's a weird little story, but it got coverage. Got a little heartstring in there too, because it's kids. Anytime mm -hmm. you can add kids or animals into your PR, it's it's helpful. Um, but I would give a caveat to that. Anytime you add kids or animals into your PR, you're asking for the unexpected. So so mm -hmm. always always just be be able to go with the flow, you know, because you just never know what the, you can't train them. You can't train them. You can't do media training with kids and and, and animals. <laughs> Galloping on to our final trait: ask if your news is rare 
or novel. And if you can share a first, something that rarely happens, you may have a great story. And think about when athletes break records, technology takes a leap, IKEA builds its first store in your region. Yeah, that's newsworthy. Um, or when nature does something rare, like the corpse flower. This flower is so cool. It only blooms every eight to 10 years. And any botanic gardens at any city is gonna make local news because it happens so rarely. So if something is rare or novel, by all means, get your message to the media and you're likely to get your story covered. To wrap up, let's review these eight traits. Is your story timely and trending? Does the proximity match the media you're pitching? Can you add an element of celebrity? Is there conflict? Does your story impact the media outlet's audience? Can you tug at the heart with human interest? Is your information bizarre? Can you share something rare or novel? So if you can answer yes to at least one of these eight traits, you have a much better chance of catching the interest of journalists. And if your story doesn't fit with any of these traits, it's, you're going to have a tough sell. It's not going to generate interest. If you need some help generating newsworthy stories for your target audience, that's where a PR professional can help. So reach out to us at uptake at uprightcoms.com to learn more about working with our team to get your company or your message some traction. And remember, good PR takes time. It's about building relationships. The more subtle the trade is in your story, the more important it is to have a great relationship with the reporter who's going to cover that story and really make a difference. That's pretty much it for the uptake today. Janie, thank you so much. And thank you all for tuning in today. Thanks, everyone. Go out there, find one of those eight traits to get some coverage. And we appreciate you watching. Bye. Bye.